Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Peaceful Challenge series. So today we want to work on the concrete factory in the end. In the last episode we already built the gravity block duper for concrete powder, sand and gravel. So the plan is to take those uh, concrete powder entities, turn them into concrete and then blow them up and put the items directly into the storage. But there's been a bit of a confusion lately what we're actually going to dupe in this series. So again, we won't use any general item tube to get more elytra, more shulker shells or anything else really. The only thing we're going to dupe is technically here the concrete powder sand and gravel and the TNT to blow up things because TNT would be way too expensive otherwise we don't have an access to the wizard so we really need that to automate things. And in case of the gravity block duping, um, we're okay with that because actually a lot of effort goes into this. We will see in the end dimension we have to build a huge factory in order to achieve this and the other alternative would really be just to yeah, destroy a lot of landscape, go to deserts and dig out the sand. So that's why we're fine with this really interesting project, but we won't dupe anything else up, yeah, apart from this. All right, time to go to the end dimension. I already prepared a little clip where we did that. Okay, I guess we are ready to go to the end, but the air is a bit thin. I think this is almost out of space. We should maybe get our spacesuits. Look, the old rumors have been true. The old space station is still intact. I can't I believe no it. one survived. Is, is there still stuff in the boxes? Yeah. Wow. Someone is keeping this running. Like, look, all the lights are still on. Are there any survivors? Okay. Let's maybe head outside. Maybe. Look, the stairs are still clean. Yeah. And there's... No dust? Yeah. Look at that! Do they find... There's miles! What the hell? He's still alive! You can what, still what are you... see! It's what been are 20 you guys years! Doing you survived! Here? We thought uh, no one survived the, the crash. You know, you, you'd be surprised what, what chorus fruit and a little gravel can do for yeah. the human body. So you did know? you actually fix the satellite? It looks almost yeah. complete again. Oh, yeah, wow. you know, uh... Lots of solar panel repair, stealing parts off the old buggy here, you know. Oh, wow. Uh, lots of work. So I guess you're back again part of the group? Yeah, I, I guess. If you'll have me. Uh, gets gets a little lonely out here. Okay. You know? Okay. Then you I know, guess you could have just jumped the into those project. portal blocks there, but... Oh. Well, uh, that's, that's too easy to answer. Uh, who knows where that goes? Not me. All right, enough of the cringy role playing for the next 30 episodes. So Miles is now also joining our team. He's been helping already in the past with some decoration projects like the ice farm or the bee nest factory. And now also the huge satellite in the background that we built around the concrete factory. It was quite a project, took us a while to build it up. So let's check out time lapses of it.
So that was the functional part of the concrete factory. Glotz built that up on his own, really can't stop the man. Let's also check it out how it works. So I need to start the concrete system in the overworld first. Now we can jump into the end dimension. So here you can see why it's important that the entities get a little bit of momentum so they are not stopped by just falling down on top of the obsidian. Just sound just slightly. All right, so what happens next to those uh, concrete powder blocks? They fall down the side here. And yeah, fall into a string and get pushed around a little bit. I'm quite sure we can see it a bit from the platform here. If not, I might just go into free cam. That's probably the best option here to show this off. All right, so here, they fall down. And then we merge uh, two of the falling block entities into one pack. So the one you can see here, those are three falling block entities and also three over here. So they get merged together. Then they shot over, up, over there and up the water column there. And like yeah, my old 1.12 concrete factory, for example, they would all turn into blocks one after the other. So the first concrete powder turns into a block and then the other now the others still have upward momentum and one of the other turn into blocks, six in total. Then you got the columns of blocks. You just have to push them around, get them into the right shape and then blow them up with TNT duping over here. Yeah, it's really best to show this in free cam. So much nicer. All right, then yeah, the items drop down, water stream and to the storage system they go. So we got Storage for all concrete colors, 16 colors in total, and we got 24, no, sorry, 20 double chests of storage in total. So we, yeah, we have a bit over a million blocks of storage here. All right, let's check it out. It's actually already completely filled up. It took us a couple of days, but get all the concrete we ever want, hopefully, unless we work on some super large projects. So yeah, really nice. <laughs> All right, there's even more modes. I'm just gonna yeah, switch the back over to sand. Um, obviously, we don't want to shoot the sand blocks into the water. So I go back to the overworld, switch to the sand, and we'll see what happens to that. All right, so we're getting sand now. So what we do here is to push up one block. So they would drop down into a diff different drop shoot, where they just drop and, well, the items go into water stream and that water stream brings them over here to the storage. Actually ran the concrete for way too long. Complete storage is filled up. There's no space for sand. I think we have to clear that somehow. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so you can see if we switch back to concrete, then it would go over the block again and then ascend also into that water system. It just get lost kind of. Wouldn't be a problem if I quickly switch between. All right, so we're getting sand here. Um, to automate this even further, we also have another switch. It can also produce glass automatically, so you can switch between sand and glass. There's a little furnace array down here that smells the incoming 36,000 sand per hour. So if I yeah, activate the switch, all the items would go in here, and then just got hopper minecarts to pick up the sand and distribute them over the 100 furnaces we got there. Um, and yeah, the incoming items are sent by a dropper into another water stream and also sent to our storage. Can probably quickly just turn this on. Let's actually check it out. One of the issues we're having is, yeah, we don't have any charcoal. <laughs> That's gonna be the next project. Um, work on something, get fuel. Obviously we could build another bamboo farm but charcoal is a bit better in terms of a fuel source because, well, one charcoal, you can smelt 32 items more than one bamboo, and it's also not too hard to get. So there's really efficient tree farms. There's definitely a yeah, high enough amount of logs. It's going to be one of the upcoming projects. All right, so this is the concrete factory. There's also lots of decoration around. Let's also check out the timeless where we build up the rest here.
So back from the time lapse, but I think we should fly around a bit more in free cam and appreciate this build a bit more, because Miles, yeah, and some others actually in creative, uh, Panda, Ecrosion, they put so much effort into this, all the details, and I think it just looks so good. I love it. <laughs> so yeah, we got a satellite, um, even with some mangoes on the side. <laughs> nice detail there. Back does, I think they called it an iron thrust, that is the idea. Really loving this. <laughs> also all the details for so much work as well. Place all the stairs, cobble balls, etc. Also figured out that there are three different type of blackstone walls that somehow were used in this. Yeah, it's so good. Here are solar panels. It was actually my idea to use the glazed terracotta. The blue one, I think that fits, fits actually the best for the solar panels. Yeah. Also got a steady even death beam in front. Shoot our way through the asteroids here. But I think the whole theme is that this satellite is a bit stranded. So we had to dig away a lot of the endstone to fit in there. But it looks a bit unnatural with the smooth walls. We might even put in some work into terraforming this. And then it would look maybe like a, yeah, a trash landing site. Okay. But what's maybe a bit missing is some decoration here around the chests for the charcoal. So the idea will be that we just um, bring over several shulker boxes of charcoal, fill up all the chests here, and then we can make several hundred thousand glass with this, which should last us a long time. Or I have a bit of glass. Um, I was using the birch tree farm to produce some charcoal, but yeah, we have something bigger in mind. All right, so this was the concrete factory build, definitely our largest project so far, but I really like <laughs> where we're going with those projects. There's another small project I want to work on. So I've been carrying around my chest plate in my inventory quite a lot when I was working in the nether, because lava is still quite dangerous if I just carry an elytra. So over time this would definitely kill me, while if I yeah, use my chest plate, I have enough protection so I could swim infinitely in lava. I was thinking maybe there's a way to not have to do this by putting some fire protection on the leggings instead. So get rid of the protection for and get a bit more fire protection and maybe that's enough. Yeah, so we don't need to use the chest plate. All right, we don't have a villager yet. They would sell us um, the yeah, fire resistance four book. So let's try to get one. In terms of villagers, we're still early game sometimes, so we got a little breeder, but yeah, the whole setup definitely needs a little bit of love. But I'm just glad there's one more villager that I could actually use. Doesn't have a profession yet, trying to get the flame protection enchantment. I think it's just gonna make another cell, like for the sharpness villager here, we can yeah, do that. Finally, fire protection. Swapping villagers or what? Yeah. That's fun. That took a while, almost 25 minutes, to finally get that fire protection for villager. But now we have some nice netherite leggings for fire protection for unbreaking and mending. Right, I'll wait a little bit more until I put it actually also on the other diamond leggings that are enchanted. See if it's really worth it. So let's try it out. Let's jump in the lava with the fire protection gear. And we're slowly losing a little bit of health. It's not quite as good as having another piece of uh, yeah, netherite gear with protection. But I think it's still quite an improvement. So in case you fall into lava, there should be enough time to save yourself. Obviously, it's getting dangerous if you would fall like in the middle of a lava lake, but that's why we carry the ender pearls. I'm quite sure uh, there's at least an improvement. Not quite as good, but yeah, still. All right, then yeah, I made more diamond leggings already for the other team members. So I yeah, put the nether right on. I should probably also get my ancient debris again. Running low on this. I think if I would put 
high protection, the boots, instead of the normal protection, then we would have full fire protection, could also swim in the lava, but it would have one downside, we wouldn't have full feather falling protection anymore. So feather falling 4 actually gives you like 12 points of fall damage reduction, and then protection 4 gives you another 4 points for the maximum of 20 if you have it on two other pieces. So we also got it on the helmet, no protection. At the moment we have full uh, fall protection. Hmm, it's kind of a trade-off. Wish we could have it all, but yeah. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.